Hey, this is Joe. After I put out my troubleshooting a solenoid video, some of the viewers came back and said, please explain what the difference is between a solenoid and a relay. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And on the screen here, we have a combination of solenoid and relays of different kinds. And let's talk about what the difference is between a solenoid and a relay is. Solenoids and relays operate pretty much the same way. Solenoids and relays are both electrically triggered and mechanically operated. But solenoids and relays perform a slightly different task. A lot of their features overlap with one another. So what we're going to do is talk about some of these different features between solenoids and relays. Solenoids and relays, being a type of a switch, operate in some basic default configurations, normally open and normally closed. What does that mean? Let's take the case of your, your car. Your car has a solenoid very similar to this in the engine bay. When you put your key in the ignition, the key is normally off. You don't want to leave the battery of your vehicle on all the time. So its default state is in the off position. So that is a type of switch that is referred to as normally open. So when you want to start your car, you put your ignition key in the ignition. You turn the ignition switch on, which then energizes your car's electrical system. When you go to start the car, you turn your key into the spring-loaded position, which energizes the solenoid, which then turns the starter motor, which rotates your engine and starts the car. When you release the key from the starting position, it's spring-loaded, it springs back to the on position. The solenoid at this point becomes de-energized once the car motor has started. In the case of a solenoid in the automotive industry, they're normally in the state of normally open. And in fact, there's even a warning label right here that says, do not engage this solenoid for more than five minutes. You're passing so much current through this solenoid that it can get hot and burn itself out, or even worse, catch on fire. So solenoids normally always are normally open and then with a brief trigger of electrical current through the small terminal it then opens up the pathways on the larger terminals with enough current to perform the operation that you want such as starting your car a solenoid is used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy usually a very high current. Again, this solenoid is rated for 200 amps. That's a lot of amperage, and in order to start your car, it requires a lot of amperage to turn that uh, starter over, to turn the motor over. Now, relays can be a bit more sophisticated than a solenoid. Uh, definition of a relay is the relays control high voltage and currents in a circuit and it acts more like a traditional switch. Like when you go into your living room and you want to turn on the lights in the living room, you flip the switch up and that turns the lights on. So you're not really turning over heavy motors or industrial type valves and things. You're basically using the relay like a switch. Relays can operate both on AC and DC. Uh, some relays are just AC, some relays are DC. This particular relay can operate both on AC and DC. This particular relay has eight terminals, and you can wire this relay in a variety of different uh, configurations. This relay has terminals or pin configurations to operate both normally open and normally closed circuits. So there may be a situation where by default, you want the terminals to be in the closed position, meaning that the, the circuit is always providing current. And then when you trigger the coil inside the relay, it then turns off that the pathways or the current going through the circuit. It also has other 
terminals or contacts that allow you then to use the same type of configuration that the solenoid has which is in a normally open position meaning the relay doesn't trigger those contacts until current is passed through the coil which then engages the circuit and allows current to flow through the contacts in the relay. We have another very small relay. This is also an 8-pin relay. This relay can be normally open and normally closed as well. But because of its size, it's limited a bit in the current carrying capability. This relay, in most cases, operates at 5 amps and in some cases 1.5 amps. And it's pretty obvious it's a very small relay. This relay that we just talked about can operate on AC and DC as this relay can. And it has a different amperage requirement based on whether this, the relay is being used as a normally open or a normally closed switch. In the normally open configuration, it can handle 10 amps. In the normally closed position, it can only handle 5 amps. And that makes sense because if the switch by default is always on, you don't want to run a lot of current through that, that portion of the circuit because you could burn out the relay. So that's why they limit the amp carrying capability or normally closed switch portion of the relay. This other relay right here is rather sophisticated. It also can operate on AC and DC, but it has in a built-in weekly timer. The circuit is powered by either AC or DC, runs a built-in clock, if you will, and you can set on and off times every day of the week for a period of a week. This relay also can be operated in a normally open or normally closed position very similar to these two switches by which terminals you connect the wires to. As we said, relays can be a bit more sophisticated in their operation. Let's do a little demonstration here to show you some of the flexibility that you can do with a relay over a solenoid. As we said, this relay has eight pins and some of these pins are configured to be normally open and some of the pins are configured to be normally closed. So let's do a little demonstration here. I have a power supply hitched up to pins two and seven. Pin number two is positive. Pin number seven is negative and is considered to be the ground terminal of this relay. We have pins number one and three, which are normally open and pins one and four normally closed. So if I take my meter and do a continuity test with the power supply off and if we go between the pins of one and four which is normally closed if I put one terminal of the meter on pin number one and touch pin number four we get continuity. So with the relay turned off, we have a complete circuit path through pins one and four. Now if we touch pins one and three, which are normally open, notice there isn't a complete path in the circuit. We have no continuity. So now if I turn the relay on, now listen for the click, the click indicated that the coil was triggered inside the relay and now the relay contacts are in a state of being engaged or triggered. So now if we touch pins 1 and 4, which was normally with no voltage on the pins or no current going through the relay, was normally closed. Notice now there's no current flowing through the pins. So by engaging or triggering the relay, pins one and four, which were originally normally closed, are now normally open. And oppositely, pins one and three were normally open, which we had continuity with the relay off. Now that we've triggered the coil, 
Now, pins one and three are normally closed or triggering the coil inside the relay. We can now change states of these four pins, one and three and one and four. And there's even ways to wire up mechanical switches. By setting up mechanical switches, you can set up a, a situation where you can use these external switches to control the relay various points or various connections to trigger between a normally open and normally closed state. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions or other types of videos you'd like to see, uh, just drop a note in the comments section and I'll try to put together a video for you. We'll see you next time.